guys, Varun here from Uniplu or the Apple Tutor and today I'm going to show you how you can create an awesome animation or an intro basically um, in Motion 5, uh, Apple's pretty new software um, released along with Final Cut Pro 10 and Compressor 5. So the video, the intro you just saw in the beginning of the video is what I made using Motion. I'm going to show you how you can make something similar uh, to that. Okay, And the first thing you'll see when you open up Motion is some, uh, the project browser. So now you have many options. You can choose your recent project, you can go to compositions and choose many templates, or you can actually make motion projects and use them as final cut effects, generators, transitions, or titles. So I'm just going to get started and open up a new motion project and make this uh, broadcast HD 720 and make all the others just default. You can use some, you can use, you can change the duration thing, the frames, time codes, second. I'm going to change this, I'm going to leave it as time code. Now we just open up motion and create a new motion project. It'll just take a couple of seconds to load, and here we go. We have our motion document opened. The first, uh, the first thing we have is just um, so, uh, the canvas, like how you see normally in other video editing softwares. We have the timeline right here, and we also have our layers, like very similar to Photoshop or Pixelmator. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just add a picture to my uh, into my canvas, into my project. So I can just create an uh, animation firstly. We need a picture. So I'm just, just select a picture from your um, from your computer from your hard drive. I'm just gonna choose this. A broken kind of hard picture. I just pretty random idea. So as you can see it's kind of zoomed in because I have the zoom rate to hundred percent. We'll just change this and fit in window so we can actually see the whole canvas. So the canvas you can actually see the full um, the your project basically. And what we want to do is resize it by holding shift, otherwise, if you're going to hold shift and um, just resize it, otherwise it'll get all messy. Like, if you don't hold shift, it'll just get all messy and stretchy like that, so you don't want that. So just put hold shift and just resize it and put it somewhere in the center, like here. Okay, so now we want to add a cool filter to this, so we can have like a maybe a distortion or movement, anything you want. So just go to library right over here, okay, and then go to filters. And this is the part where you can choose whatever you want. I just want to make this thing move like really rapidly, like a distortion type of effect. There's many folders you can choose from, but I'm just going to go to all and then choose an earthquake kind of effect. Um, so I'm just going to go down and find earthquake. And you actually get a preview of how it looks like. So you, you don't even actually have to like actually put it into your uh, picture to actually see how it looks like. So once you have the, pr uh, the thing, you can actually apply it or you can just drag it into the picture. Just like that, and you actually already had. So, um, if I just pause this, let's see how it let's see how it looks. If I just play it, so you can see the picture uh, is vibrating a lot, uh, causing that earthquake effect. So now we have our picture uh, animated right there. We want to add some text below this. So if I just you know resize it a bit smaller so I can have space for my text, put it somewhere in the center. Now I just create text by just going to this T button right here, text tool. Click text and just type in whatever you want. And just for the sake of this, I'll just type motion tutorial. Sorry. There. Now we just click another layer and then go back. Now we can actually move it and resize it. Same way how you resize a picture. Okay, so now we have it just below our picture right here. Now we want to actually um, add a cool. Um, text sequence or animation to this, um, we'll add a behavior. So we just go back, go to our library and click on behaviors. Then we go to text animation or text sequence. I'll just go to text sequence. I can choose from the various folders right here. I'm just going to go to text, um, let's say text energetic. Okay. Now we have many things here. You can still get a preview of how you normally get it with the filter. Uh, this is how awakening looks like. This is how blasting looks like. Um, I'm just going to use, um, I'm just going to use bouncing. So we just drag this uh, into our picture right here, into our text, and then, uh, oops, I think I just, yeah, you got to actually have this selected and just drag the bounce in into our text right here. Now we can actually um, choose where we want to move it around, but I'm just going to leave it there and we can just see how it looks like. Okay, so if we go back to our timeline and play it, you can actually see that it bounces in from there, which is cool. This is what we want. Now I just want to add some style to this text so that it can have like a glue effect. It's basically like adding fonts. So if we click on our um, text right here and go to library, we can see something called text styles right over here. 
Now we just click there and we have a whole section of fonts right below and we can actually choose from the various uh, fonts. Let's just, I'm going to match the picture so I'm just, I'm just going to choose Scarlet because you know it's red and you know it somehow matches the picture. So I just drag it in and you know suddenly it's become red which looks pretty awesome. Just drag it in a bit more so you can make it a bit bigger and it looks actually pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. And now, uh, actually, uh, to add keyframes in motion, uh, you have a little button right here. It's actually to record keyframes. It's different from w other video editing softwares. So, once you click record, wherever your playhead in the timeline is, and whatever you make a change, is basically where the keyframe will be added. So, if I go to object and go to new camera, I can actually switch to 3D and make, like, make it rotate or zoom around or anything like that. Uh, once I click the record keyframe button, I want to add a keyframe right here, uh, rotated. I'm just going to rotate it so it's going to have a 3D effect. Rotate it here. Perfect. So now um, we have it added here. You won't really see the keyframe, but um, you'll have it added there. Let's move it a bit more in there and we rotate it again. Uh, we'll rotate it this way now. You can do whatever you want, rotate it. And once you go there, you can actually zoom in. We'll zoom in a bit or zoom out whatever you want and then uh, just go in a bit more and actually rotate back to its original position so you can experiment experiment around in this part once you have that we'll just play from the beginning and see how it looks you can see it's uh, rotating slightly the other side is this uh, animation you can see now it's zooming in and go back to its original position it already looks awesome, guys. This is basically how you make an intro. Um, I just want to add some mu uh, audio to this music. So I'm just going to choose from my GarageBand's uh, recordings I made. And then um, let's just use this song. If you click on it, you get a preview. Once you like it, just close it and just um, move your playhead all the way back to the beginning. So you can actually uh, put the song in the beginning. I just drag it in right here. Uh, just over here and it actually plays here if you want to stop the music just click over here now we'll just play it and see how it matches with the animation yeah so basically this is how you create an awesome intro and animation in motion 5 uh, pretty simple actually this is just how you can get started with Motion 5. You can experiment around with all the different um, effects you have here. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, Motion tutorial. Um, definitely more tutorials coming up. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.